if you haven't heard of Crowing State Park, um, stay tuned. <music> As we approach the Chippewa Lookout, as we go up the hill here, you're going, you're going to see that the Ojibwe actually had an advantage point in a major battle between the Ojibwe and the Dakota in 1768. The reason the Ojibwe chose to be up top of the hill is if you look down, you'll see the Mississippi. Apparently, earlier in that day, the Dakota attacked a village at Big Sandy Lake and took women captives. And as they were escaping down the Mississippi, the Ojibwe began fire on the Dakota and the women captives actually helped in the battle by flipping the canoes and swimming ashore. So this was actually quite a major battle in 1768, which is why um, in this area, the Ojibwe um, took over this area. As we continue down the path, you'll see that we're going to be coming upon Oxcar Trail, which led from this region to all the way to St. Paul. We are at the site of the Old Crow Wings Episcopal Church. Hmm. First service was held here April 28, 1861 by Reverend E. Steele Peak. The church originated as an outreach of the Gull Lake Mission, which started, which was started by Reverend Boyd Reck in 1852. Oh, look at this. It says the historic trail. Should we check this out? Yeah, we've never, I don't think we've ever been down that no, trail. No, we have not been down that trail. So. But I just want to let you know here at Crow Wing State Park, there's over 16 miles of hiking trails. So if you're definitely a hiker, um, you'd enjoy this park. In the winter months, they also allow um, cross country skiing down these same trails. Right here, we're up on top of the hill by where the old schoolhouse is and a lot of the churches are up here. And if you can see, it's hard to see on this camera, there's a hole right here, which was the foundation of the school. And then as we come across here to this trail, that's where the, that's the overlook for where the Mississippi is. And that's where the Indian battle actually happened. So here we're entering, this is where the kids would actually go this direction to town. Um, we just left the school. And just around the corner on the far end is actually Old Crow Green City or town. Now we're coming into view. This is actually where the town used to be. It's right on the Mississippi, right through woods there is the oldest house north of the city. In 1850 the town grew to about 600 people and the American Fur Company out of St. Paul moved up here as their headquarters. This also was the uh, old ox cart trail. They would actually bring furs from this area take by ox cart all the way down to St. Paul. So I can't imagine what that was like. So in right day. here you don't see the sign anymore it's been removed. But this sign used to say it was the hotel. So it's one of the first hotels um, up in this area. And you can kind of barely see where the hole is there, but that's where the uh, hotel was when it was a fur company. And then as I come back and I span across here, there were about six businesses along this boardwalk. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we get closer. This is the oldest house in pretty much northern Minnesota. In its day, in the 1850s, this uh, house was considered a mansion. Can you believe that? So here's the front door to this mansion of 1850s. And then they stood and looked down into the town. The founder, his home is right back in there if you can barely see it. And then this is the Bailey home. And there used to be, when we came here earlier in the, like 30 years ago, you could see kind of a fence back in here where the house was. Oh gosh, it is really overgrown, hasn't it? But it is really, yeah, absolutely overgrown. I don't remember who the Baileys were and how they came here, but they were basically fur traders, right? Yes. So they came here to help with the fur trade. And this Bailey house was one of the last buildings to stand where Crow Wing once was. 
Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So this was the last one. Um, you're basically in the middle of nowhere, and you got a picture that there was Indian Wars going on in central Minnesota. Just south of where I'm pointing was actually a military reservation, and they built the fort there to keep the peace between the Dakota and the Ojibwe. And originally it was called Fort Gaines, and then later they changed to it, changed the fort name to Fort Ripley. Uh, currently today, it's actually a military National Guard base. Um, still active, it was involved in World War II. We'll do a video later on the original fort, and there isn't much left to that. As Rhonda is walking down Main Street, this is the boardwalk. This is actually where the boardwalk was at in its time in the 1850s. Um, it was a commercial district. If you look off to my right, we have the Mississippi River, and that's why they chose this for the fur trade. And what's interesting is the founder, as we walk down Main Street here, the founder actually um, owned several of the businesses. So think about that. He founded it and he also owned the businesses here in town. As you can see, this is a very nice stretch of the Mississippi to go kayaking or canoeing on. It's a nice, calm stretch. Any of you are familiar with the Piers area in Minnesota, but um, Father Piers, Father, Father Francis Xavier Piers, amazing work when it came to small communities and, and they called organized religion at that time. He set up a Catholic mission here. And in 1856, a Lutheran church was established by Reverend Ottomar Clutter and an Episcopal church right after that. But no, Father Piers had a lot to do with the building of Crow Wing Village also. This area was, um, it was a hard place because it was composed of three classes of people. Indians, half-breeds, and some lumbermen. Oh, this is, oh, I gotta get this. This is the actual map of the Crow Wing community village when it existed. But if you look, if you look close, you can see all the different uh, streets they had and um, residents. Amazing. Right here along the river, and you can't, it's all built up. It used to be when we came here a hole, you could actually see the hole. But this is where a store was and where their water supply. So they would come here for the water, where their well, right here by the Mississippi. So as we're passing the founder's home, and we're now looking at where the hotel was at, I want to show you something right over here. And this was the Sioux camp prior to the amb ambush of 1768. Straight down that river, the Mississippi, you'll actually see uh, Fort Ripley. Uh, and they were brought up here to protect the farmers and the settlers that were moving uh, this direction. In about 1862, the town was pretty much dying, but the few people that were here, along with the village of Fort Ripley, they were brought over to the fort to protect them during uh, a battle, an Indian War of 1862. Well, here's a, another interesting story about the yeah, ghost town of Crow Wing. This was the county seat, the original county seat before Brainerd became the county seat. And what happened was, how did Brainerd get there? And what happened here? The founders of Crow Wing was hoping that the railroad would build, um, the railroad would build a bridge right across here, and that would have kept the, the town alive. Right. What killed this community was the railroad actually 10 miles north where Brainerd is, built the crossing there instead. And they also built, built a crossing 10 miles, well, probably 15 right. miles south of right. the falls. So those Brainerd Little Falls area became very well-known lumber towns, and this one kind of faded away. You know, Rhonda, you know what I'm amazed by every time I come to a ghost town? You know, I look around here and you see the sidewalks, you see where businesses were used to be, 
and you read about their lives, these people are just like us. Uh -huh. You know, they, they wanted to work, right. they wanted to explore, they, they wanted to educate their kids. And here's a town, um, I believe it, in its heyday, was a thousand people that lived here. So that's a thousand lives that if they were to come back today, they would be shocked that the town they built right. is gone, it wiped is. out. And if it wasn't for the Historical Society or for the DNR to preserve places like this, nobody would ever know that this community existed. Yeah. And, and I just, you know, you stand here and you're just, I can picture the people walking around. Yes. I can see them. A thousand people is a lot of people. A thousand people are a lot. What I mean, that time it, it was enough people to actually build three churches to provide uh, religion Service. services. Right. And just to think that wagon trains came through here, the military was actually not just called Oxcart Road, mm -hmm. it, later it was called uh, the Military Trail. And so if you go onto the other side of the Mississippi, that was the Military Trail where uh, Fort Ripley took the military down that road, and then the ox carts went down this road. So, but still, I mean, there was a lot of movement, a lot of life. It wasn't a good life, I mean. Well, yeah, I don't, personally, I would not want to have grown up in the 1800s. I mean, I'm spoiled. Can you imagine bringing your family up here from St. Paul to basically, this was a wilderness. There was no Brainerd, Minnesota. There was no Little Falls. It, this was the town in central Minnesota. You were here helpless. And there were two Indian tribes at the time battling each other, hated each other. And you were just a victim standing in between this battle. I would have a hard time at that time period making it on a wagon train from Little Falls to here, and that's only 10 miles. And I can't imagine how many days that took. Yes. You know, and then you're traveling, not just traveling in a wagon, you know, dirt road, but you're also traveling among where the Dakota and the Ojibwe mm -hmm. were um, in the area. So, so you're always on alert. You were always on alert. You know, these people walked a lot because yeah. You know, you saw where the kids went to school, way up on the hill. And right now we're traveling up this path <laughs> to get to the Catholic Church. So I don't know why they kept the Catholic Church so far, but I think it's because the cemetery. Right, it's not a cemetery. No, it's we a get... graveyard. Um, a cemetery is separate from the church, the religious establishment itself. A graveyard was is either near or next to a church. So you never call the cemetery, a, a church, you call it a graveyard if it's next to a church, not yeah, a cemetery. Yeah. And we actually learned that when we were on a ghost tour in South, Carolina. in South Carolina at one of the most oldest and haunted graveyards mm -hmm. in the U.S., which we didn't see anything. We're still working our way and we're almost here at the Catholic Church. Now here's a Another historical fact here. There was a big controversy in Little Falls, Minnesota, oh, probably 30 years back about right. where he was buried. Right. Because they swear it's it's a site right off of 371. So the only one who really knows is Chief Hollander. Now, do you know whose grave this is supposed to be? This is actually the, they don't really know if he's buried here, but Chief Hole in the Day they believed was buried here. And it's, it used to be, say that on this sign. So let's see if we can find anything in the cemetery. Yeah. Um, it used to be there, but we'll check it out. I can actually see it, it's gone. But we'll go see what's there. You'll, you'll actually see a couple holes where the graves were re, uh, removed. Do you know how this church started? Um, right here, this is in memory of Father Lawrence um, Ludisier, born in Austria, 1820. This actually is in a state park, uh, Crow Wing State Park. And here's some more information. If you come here, you'll see um, this, this church was built in what, 19? No, actually, I don't know when it was built. 1852. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. So it's about 1958. And then 1915, it was demolished. And then the stones here are part of the original church and they rebuilt it. So this isn't the original building, but it's the site of the original building. Right. 
but the stones are part of the original. Do you know um, who started this church? Did you find out any history? Uh, Father Francis Xavier Pierce, who was very well known for Pierce history and the establishment of the village of Pierce also, he was here in 1852 and established the first Catholic mission. And a lot of people don't know his history. It's actually, he was in Piers, mm -hmm. um, created a Catholic church in Piers. And then during the Indian Wars, he would travel, here. which was amazing. He would travel into the woods, into, going from village to village to help keep peace. Right. As, and, if, and if anybody knows the proximity of Piers to Crow Wing, it is, it's, uh, what, 35 miles? Right. I mean, that's a long trip. And then he would go to Mille Lacs Lake where other, India, the other villages were of Dakota and... Um, right, yeah. So it's, it's amazing how much he traveled in that time period. And there was a few times where he actually, I don't know if you know this, but there was a few times that he was aware that there was going to be a, a battle mm -hmm. and he would warn the Indians of a village. Yes, he was the mighty peacekeeper between them. Yes. So we're just leaving the Catholic mission, and then I want to show you, and we're going to pass Rhonda. If you go straight down that road, that's actually where the schoolhouse is, where we uh, filmed earlier. And we're going to go down there and check out the Lutheran mission right now. That is the original location. Um, it was Reverend uh, Clotter. Also, I'm probably butchering all these old names. Yeah, so we apologize. So if, uh, <laughs> if you're a family, so don't don't email me yeah. or put nasty messages. Yeah. We're doing our best. Yes, be kind. <laughs> he moved his family from uh, family to Fort Ripley and then to Crow Wing. He rented a house at this location from where he did the missionary work in the Crow Wing community and the outlying areas until we we'll learn a little bit more about the Lutheran mission here. Water established residence after his mission state sta station here. Missionary Clotter established residence after the missionary station at uh, Geba, Geba to Wigamar. Oh, there you go again. Just <laughs> all these Indian names. We are so going to get bad emails. Extensive missionary journeys were undertaken from here into the outlying wilderness areas of the entire northern section of the state. You're pissing me off. As we're leaving where the Lutheran church is, if we go down this path, we're actually going back to where the schoolhouse was located at. Did so, that cool breeze? I kinda. Where'd it come from? As we continue down this trail, but right across, if you look, there's a road over here, and right across is that schoolhouse. I've got it pressed. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, we're going. <laughs> okay. You're all hot and sweaty. I know, so are you. It's not good hot and sweaty, it's bad hot and sweaty. Oh. But hey, we're done. We're finished? Yes, we're finished. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Um, again, there's a lot to see in this ghost town, believe it or not. Even though there's just a house and uh, a boardwalk, it's, it's neat to come and check it out. This is a town that was populated. It was many people living here. Mm -hmm. they, they probably had dreams of this town growing and being big. Right. And today it's gone. Yeah. And their ancestry doesn't even see it anymore. It's gone. Mm -hmm. But And as you went over to the Catholic Cemetery and we checked that out, those those people were left behind. You mm -hmm. know, if you think about it, their 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 families left and, and left the left deceased here, right, to right. be forgotten. Unless people like us who go over mm -hmm. and film who they are and what they are and how yeah. they got there. You know what? What do I stink? No, but you, even sweaty, you smell good. <laughs> yeah. I always that's, love the smell. That's like nasty. <laughs> All so, right. but it's been a good day. I'm glad we came out here today instead of yesterday. Yesterday was really steamy, sticky, hot, and there was it's a lot still of hot. there was a lot of storms that rolled through overnight to relieve it a little. Yeah. But yeah, it's still hot, and you can tell there's a few branches down and stuff here. So there was a tornado um, north of here last night. Yeah, about ten miles. Yeah, ten miles north. So luckily the park was spared. <laughs>